Sword in the Stone came out in 63. We were writing Sword in the Stone earlier, I mean, but it took three years to produce. Well, we always start from not the words and not the music, but an idea. What is that about? And once we have a conception, then we discuss who's going to sing it, what year it's going to take place, uh, in what personality the voice will come. Uh, all these various uh, everything that goes into it. ingredients are discussed long before any melodies or lyrics. And then we start saying, well, what's a good angle? What's a new angle? Because so many songs have been written, we try to come up with something that's a little different. That's why we invent words sometimes. Higgitus figitus, migitus mum, presta digitonium. Well, actually, uh, we had a need for magic. Merlin was going to have to move, and he wanted to take all of his equipment with him, his books and uh, his maps and all the things that he needed. And, and he uh, stuck them all in a one. In a little carpet bag, in you know, a little suitcase. And uh, we didn't want to say abracadabra. That we just wanted to do different words. So how would he do this, you know? And the conversation was, well, he's British, you know, and uh, we have to have sort of a British-sounding magic. And also, uh, it's sort of Latin, because he's very into Latin and Greek and all that. So we came up with Higgitus, Figitus. Because Higgitus from Higginbottom. That sounded, you know, very British. And then Higgitus, Figitus, Migitus, Mum, like you were declining some Latin. So it... Higgitus, figgitus, migitus, mum, prestidigitonium. We're packing to leave, come on, let's go. Books are always first, you know. Oh, where was I, boy? Uh, hockety pockety? Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Diminish, diminish dictionary, that word's in your vocabulary. Hockety pockety, wockety whack, that's the way we've got to pack. Higgitus, figgitus, migitus, mum, prestidigitonium. Oh, what a way to pack. <laughs> I was practically given up for dead after a very traumatic experience <clears throat> that I'd had 15 years ago now, and uh, was unable to move. I had a stroke. I couldn't move. I was paralyzed, of course. I couldn't see. And after being discharged from the hospital, it was hard not to give up. But my wife, bless her soul, she and I had loved this lovely place before. I personally feel that you have to get out in the world and see people. You have to observe people. You have to watch what's going on and see in order to know what's funny about them. You have to argue with the insurance man. You have to argue with the salesman. Art was what I really liked. And of course, people said, well, gee, you'll be living in an attic on bread ends and carrot tops. Artists can't make any money. This was in the middle of the Depression, you know. First animated feature. But we didn't know too much about how pictures were made. We learned that one must really pre-establish thematic lines uh, within a musical film, and so that the melodies of the songs are utilized in background as well as in foreground when they're sung. We got more clout with Walt's confidence in us, and so eventually Walt would say, uh, we could talk to the musical director of the film, and we could uh, involve ourselves in the spotting of the film. After the film was filmed and the songs are in, you spot the underscoring, and we were there in spotting sessions and things like that, so that helped a lot. We pressed forward with that in mind on all our future pictures, and so they were far more integrated. The songs were nice, I mean, they worked very nicely within the scenes, but then they didn't bring the melodies forward. And play. See, if they used the melodies after the song was sung, it would keep the, the, the audience apprised of what was going on and the characters. This is Walt's looking for people he would like to build his staff in anticipation of doing the classics in feature length and um, you are in a way a writer and you're in a way an artist and uh, you have some creative ability the uh, house of the seven gables in which i was the new england male man and i looked very good with a little pointed beard and and uh, my height obviously didn't matter it was good, it was useful in this picture. In opera, they call it leitmotifs. Characters, personality, themes continue. In Poppins, you heard it all the time. Erwin Kostel, who did a great job on that. I mean, when Mary Poppins was there, you heard Spoonful of Sugar, and when Bert was there, you, you heard Chim Chim Cherie. I mean, these are things that you heard. I mean, it's just constant. And that's what we felt was missing in Sword in the Stone. We wrote several songs that were not used in the film. One was uh, alluded to, I think, melodically, but was never sung, and that was the Blue Oak Tree. This would have been sung by the knights at the castle. It shows how stupid they were. And all they ever did every day was joust 
and they would eat and they would joust and drink and eat some more. And of course they had loyalty to this ridiculous blue oak tree on a field of white which meant nothing. And uh, we had fun with that one, it really... It's uh, weird. <laughs> To the blue oak tree on a field of white We pledge our loyalty forever The white stands for right, purity and might And the blue stands for truth, yea verily forsooth So we drink our toast to the banner we love most May it proudly wave on high we will sing all night and all day. We will fight for the blue oak tree on the field of white. For the blue oak tree on a field of white. Disney Studio to come back for a, a, about a six weeks assignment, a writing assignment. And that six weeks stretched into 23 years. They had me tell it, they had me present it. You know? So I was the one who stood up with the pointer and, and, and told the story to Walt. Well, somehow that very act of standing up there and doing it and pointing out the story and telling it to Walt made you a story man. Well, in everybody's eyes, maybe not in Walt's, but everybody else's eyes. At the time I was going to school, I enjoyed the cartoons that were out. Uh, you know, the Mickeys and things that you'd see in the, the theaters. Uh, we liked them a lot, but I never thought of that as a profession because it looked like, uh, well, you know, it, it wasn't classy enough. I, I had <laughs> ideas that I was going to be a, I was going to be an illustrator, I was going to be an industrial designer, I was going to design egg beaters. I was going to do good things. And uh, Bob and I were very kind of pleased with it because it really was story, was the magic key. Nobody knows, but, well, they wanted to tell story uh, with this thing. In other words, they wanted to move the story forward to get Merlin and Wart, the little young King Arthur, to go back to that castle. And so they had to do it in a hurry and the magic song worked. But originally we had, in The Sword and the Stone, we, we really wanted to emphasize the fact that the brains, the intelligence that Merlin was trying to imbue with the wart, with the future king, was the key to the entire picture. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to express it musically, but that, that was one of the things we really wanted to do with the magic key. Well, a layout artist has to take the storyline. I would just look at the animation and, and uh, find out where the action was. I would know, know the story. Then I'd think up a, a design that I thought would be fitting for it and then I would design the structure of the backgrounds. It was fun to look at, and, and, and I'm quite sure that that resulted in the life of these cartoons that are still... I came here in 1935, and then I retired a few years ago, but I, I'm, working, I'm working as much or there for a while, almost as much as when I was on staff all the time. A noggin full of knowledge is the magic key that nobody knows, but we do, don't we? We do. <laughs> With a hey dum dairy and a dairy, let me see. With a hey dum dairy and a dairy. Okay, I haven't played this in 40 years. Let's try one more time. Good that we have tape, right? This was never used. This has more meaning than higgadis, higgadis, miggadis, mum. With a hey dum dairy and a dairy dum dee, fill your noggin full of knowledge and then you'll see what a glorious experience your life will be. A noggin full of knowledge is the magic key. Magic key, magic key to what? The key to the doors to the future and past of both be yours to explore at last. The greatest adventure of them all you see. A noggin full of knowledge is the magic key. Magic key, dairy dum dee, magic key, dairy dum dee. With a noggin full of knowledge, you're bound to find the thrill of the ability to use your mind. Mathematics and philosophy and history are very necessary for the magic key. But I can't read with a hey dum dirty and a dirty dum d. You've got to learn the alphabet from A to Z. Letters make words, and words you see are very necessary for the magic key. A to Z, dirty dum d. A to Z, magic key. If you read your history and read it well, you can see why empires rose and fell and if you learn the lessons of your history yes sir you're possessor of the magic key and it's a terrible thing really i don't want to get 
<coughs> carried away by, but if you have absolutely no control over your body, you don't know what to talk, what to think about to make something move, uh, it's a terrible situation. Somehow or other, these trees inspired me. Uh, just as a musician, or just as an actor, or just as something else, the fascinating thing about animation was it gave me a chance to use all of these interests, uh, work them together, and they all helped each other. But I was very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time and to be able to live this kind of a life. Walt wasn't a man, he was a force of nature. And that's about it, too. But anyway, she said in that last scene that I did where uh, Baloo and Bagheera dance off into the sunset, she says, you know, that's just the way Walt went off. He went off into the sunset, just like that, and there he's gone. 37 years since we tossed it out of the movie. Sword in the Stone was a wonderful experience for us, and we certainly learned so much from it. And it really led to our future successes with such Disney classics as Poppins and Jungle Book and the Winnie the Pooh series and the Tigger movie.